Search for the deadly 60. Amazing! It's not just animals that are deadly to me, but that are deadly in their own world. My crew and I are traveling the planet. You are coming with me every step of the way! Search for the Deadly 60 has taken me all over this wondrous planet we call home. I've met the jeweled miracles of the rainforests, soared with the birds of prey that rule our skies, and dabbled with the denizens of the ocean deeps. In this program, I've chosen some of the deadly animals that are also on the endangered list, which means they're threatened through loss of habitat and at risk of disappearing from the wild forever. Endangered animals are few in number and can be incredibly difficult to find and film. One mysterious bird of prey chooses to live as far from human beings as it possibly can. So to find one, we had to journey deep into the rainforests of Panama. This is where our adventure really starts. When this place goes stranded, out here in the forest. No going back now, Nick. All aboard the big pink fun bus. Then on foot with horses to share the load. A magical mystery tour in search of probably the most powerful bird of prey. The Harpy Eagle hunts the rainforest treetops, armed with talons longer than a grizzly bear's claws. It uses these fearsome daggers to pierce clean through the skulls of monkeys and sloths. The world's heaviest eagle needs vast areas of untouched forests in order to get enough of its chosen prey. But as human beings cut down the forests and move it to the Harpy's hunting grounds, there's simply nowhere left for the Harpies to go. It took us three days to penetrate into untouched forests and the realm of the Eagle King. He's pointing at something. Looking up. That way. I think that's where the nest must be. The Eagles build their nests in the oldest, tallest rainforest trees. Just the kind that human loggers value most. This is a tree. It's huge. She's calling. That is beautiful. She knows we're here. Her job now is to try and find another tree around here somewhere that we can climb so we can film it. Stealth mode from here on in. Very, very quiet. The eagles above may well have chicks. For such a rare bird, they're incredibly precious. We have to move carefully so as not to disturb them. This is actually really exciting. We're about for the first time to get right up above the forest canopy. This is a magnificent tree. It's probably as high as a 16-story building. And for up there, I'm really going to get an eagle's eye view of what this forest really looks like. There we go. Higher and higher into the treetops where eagles dare. This is utterly spectacular. I'm just coming into the part of the canopy where the harpy eagle hunts. It's so thick, so dense up here. It's incredible to think a bird of that size can just swoop in and out of all of this vegetation and snatch a monkey off a branch. Now that's something I'd like to see. Right. Let's get the bins out. See what we can see. Right. Well, there's our eagle tree. Just see the top of it. Hold from the distance out that way. 
Um, you can just make out the top of the tree, but she's too well hidden. I can't really see her. Oh dear. This is proving to be incredibly tough. But that's why the Harpy Eagle is just so rarely seen. You know, they're very canny birds. They choose spots where they can see their prey. They've got a good view over all the area that the monkeys and sloths and things that they like to eat are moving, but they themselves are still quite well hidden. We're probably 60 meters up here, and that is a very long way down. I think maybe our best shot actually is gonna be from over that direction, but we haven't got time to rig another tree. I think, believe it or not, we're going to have to try and film this from the ground. It's not ideal, but I think it's the only option we have left to us. So, with no joy from our 60 metre treetop, it's time for plan B. None of us ever thought we'd stand a chance of seeing a half eagle from the ground, but with Johnny's super powerful lens, miracles can happen. throwing everything we have at this. Park them all this way in. Not see them, that would be a tragedy. Finally, with a line of sight cleared and a camera focused, we can see the untidy tangle of the nest. And then with a swoop of a mighty wing, the most powerful eagle on earth lands above us, standing guard over her eggs or chicks. Well, that's better than I thought we'd get from here, Johnny, I have to say. That's pretty good. It feels nice to see a bird. Yeah. What we're looking at here is probably the biggest eagle in the world. Wingspan 2.1 meters. That's like if I was to stand up and then hold my hand up in the air, it would be about that long. And she is magnificent. Well, it's cost us several bucket loads of sweat each. But finally, we've got our view of the Harpy Eagle. This is something I honestly never thought I'd ever get a chance to see. The most powerful, one of the largest birds in the whole world and also one of the rarest. People spend their whole lives in these forests and never get a glimpse like we're seeing now. And there she is, stood up there in the nest with possibly chicks, possibly eggs, but whatever, hope for the future of harpy eagles. Harpy eagles would once have ruled the skies over much of Latin America. These forests that once rung to the piercing sounds of eagle calls are now dominated by the sounds of chainsaws. We're cutting down a football field sized patch of rainforest every second. Our insatiable demand for wood, for furniture, building, paper, cardboard is bringing these ancient forests to the ground. When my parents were young, there were half as many people on the planet as there are now, and our numbers are still increasing. As we spread out, the spaces for wildlife get more and more squished. There's perhaps nowhere on Earth where this is happening as fast as in Madagascar. It's a unique island with bizarre wildlife. Almost all of the island of Madagascar is once covered in lush green forests rammed full of unique wildlife. Over recent years though, the human population of Madagascar has been soaring, and in order to make way for all those people and their crops, those forests are being systematically cut and burned down. If it continues at this rate, then in my lifetime, there'll be simply nowhere for the wildlife to go. For a wildlife lover, this is one of the most exciting places imaginable. Almost everything you see is new, weird, colorful, crazy. But the island's uniqueness is also its curse. 90% of Madagascar's reptiles only occur here. Nearly all of the world's chameleons are found here and nowhere else. 
And it's the only place in the world you can see lemurs in the wild. So once an animal's gone from Madagascar, it's gone forever. To try and prevent the loss of the weirdest of all the lemurs, a captive breeding program has been set up in the island's capital city. I went along to meet the oddest animal in all the world. As the forests where it lives disappear, so this ghostly ghoul of the Madagascan night could soon go extinct and become no more than a creepy memory. As the tropical storm beats down on the roof overhead, we quietly set up an infrared camera that can film in complete darkness to try and get our first glimpse of this unusual predator. Here he comes. Oh my goodness. That is one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. And I've seen some real animal oddballs in my time. This is an eye eye. It's one of the weirdest creatures in the world. Look at those great big long weird fingers. Right, I think we'll give him a little while to settle down. And then we're going to go in and get better acquainted. How weird was that? This gremlin-like creature is totally unique, possessing one of the most specialized weapons in the natural world. Take a look at this. That's not a dagger it's carrying around with it, that's actually one of its fingers. This skinny, twig-like finger drums against the tree trunk, while super sensitive ears are tuned into the rustlings of any potential prey hiding inside. If there's a meal to be had, the eye eye will find it. Once locked on, it unleashes its awesome chisel-like teeth and they make short work of the bark before poking in that deadly digit and hooking out that juicy meal. I will hopefully be returned to the wild and are not used to people. They're bound to be nervous as I enter the cage. This is such a spooky experience. You can almost totally forget that you're in a zoo with this crazy goblin. Crikey, I think she thought my finger was something edible for a second there. When it comes down to it, they are pretty fierce. Though it looks like someone's sellotaped together a squirrel, a bat and a beaver, the eye eye is actually a primate and distantly related to us humans. Just using that finger to dig out. Rubs underneath the bark. It's crazy. As Madagascar's forests dwindle, eye eyes in the wild are becoming more and more rare. Perhaps their only hope lies in places like this, where males and females can be brought together in a safe environment and encouraged to breathe. Bizarre though they are, I really think the eye eye has a certain charm, but um, you can really understand why local people have such a fear of them. I mean, they do look like they could be devils or ghouls. That is one of the reasons why local people will kill an eye eye as soon as they see it because they consider them to be taboo or bad luck. My only opportunity of seeing an eye eye was to come here to this zoo. Firstly because of all of the human pressures that are making them much, much rarer in the wild. 
exactly because they are shy, elusive, or total animals, but also because the forest they live in is increasing in size day by day. If we're not careful, the only place we'll ever be able to see an eye in the future is going to be in a zoo like this. That will be a terrible tragedy. Beavers, big and small, are all under threat. And when I say small, they do get really small. This is the Madame Burst Mouse Lemur, the smallest primate on Earth. And you can see how delicate, how fragile an animal like this is. And really, it's, it's horrifying that these creatures are at risk because of us. These forests around us now here in Madagascar are disappearing at a terrifying rate. And unfortunately, us humans are having the same effect all over the planet. And that has a knock-on effect for all the primates, from the smallest to the largest. Over 2,000 times heavier than the tiny mouse lemur, the chimpanzee is another primate in danger. Uganda is one of the best places left to have breakfast with our closest relatives. We've teamed up with expert local trackers who are taking us deep into the forest. One of our guide reckons there's a tree down here, a big tree, that's in fruit right now. And it... Oh, yes. Prince. We've already had this place. So there's some, some really, really clear prints and very fresh as well. Those are this morning. For sure. So they're close. Go. So what I was saying before was that there's a fig tree down here and it's in fruit at the moment. So this would be a really good place to try and find the chimps. And as we get closer, we find another clue. Which has been left behind by a chip. It's another good sign. All the signs are pointing this way. Yeah. Then we hear haunting calls oh, yes. and spot dark shapes up in the branches. Yes, fantastic. That is the chimpanzee long call. It's just this excited wail that builds and builds and builds. We are utterly surrounded and being pelted from above with figs. Chimpanzees are found in the forests of Central and West Africa. They live in family groups of around 30 animals, interacting with a variety of calls and facial expressions. They have big brains and are famously intelligent, even learning to use tools. Honest, they really do! Tough forest nuts are cracked open with specially selected rocks and logs. This chimp team is a well-oiled machine, strutting mean and menacing when they're on the prowl. Being able to solve complex problems is a valuable asset, and in the depths of the forest where humans rarely roam, it puts chimps at the top of the tree. In a manner of speaking. Oh, oh no. This is what we expect in the forest. Was, was that fig or was that poo? No, uh, it's fig. No, it, it wasn't. Is, I'm sorry, Ronald, but that is not fig. <laughs> that is <laughs> chimp poo, and that just clouds me right in the face. <laughs> And feeling this is how our day is going to go. <laughs> now, what I can tell you from looking at this dropping is that at the moment these chimps are feeding almost exclusively on fig. But that isn't always the case. In fact, here, less than half of the chimps' diet is made up from fruit. What they actually feed on an awful lot of the time is monkeys and even small antelope. Chimps are well-drilled hunters, and their favourite prey are colobus monkeys. These leaf-eaters are smaller and more agile than the chimps, but they can be cornered and caught when chimps use their team tactics to round them up in the trees. Several males will chase their prey into an ambush, 
Then the hunters gather around to share in the meal. Meat eating may look gruesome, but the protein in the meat is a vital part of the chimp's diet and helps to fuel those big brains. Chimp either, those monkeys. But ch Chip's going after them. No way! There was a couple of vervet monkeys just came into the corner of the tree here, and the chimps didn't like it and just went straight for them. The monkeys have got away though, they're heading off this side. The branches coming down, figs coming down, poo coming down. Good job he's got the umbrella. Unfortunately, us humans can't resist our cute cousins. Young chimps are sometimes taken from the wild for use as pets or for tourists to have their photos taken with them. But as the cute youngsters turn into strong, aggressive adults, they're then abandoned or mistreated. Chimps really should be left alone to live in the wild. something weirdly prehistoric about this whole experience. I just feel like I've been transported back in time. Humans and chimps share a common ancestor. They're our closest living relatives. When you're this close to them, there's so much about their appearance, about their gestures, their facial signs that's very, very human. It's not just chimps that are endangered. Of the 630 species of those primates, more than 300 are threatened with extinction. Loss of habitat is the main threat to their existence, so it's important that whatever little forest does remain, remains safe. Anti-poaching patrols try to do exactly that. They remove illegal traps and snares to try and protect the animals of the forest, and that includes one of its largest and unfortunately rarest inhabitants. The Mountain Gorilla. Found in the forests of Rwanda, Congo and Uganda, these majestic animals are around 10 times stronger than I am. But gorillas are peaceful vegetarians and only aggressive when protecting their families. Nowadays though, the mighty male silverback gorillas are not merely putting their lives on the line to fight off leopards or other natural predators. Instead, they're facing human foes. And even the power of the silverback can't fight off a poacher's bullet. High in the Ugandan cloud forests, I creep towards a group of gorillas with my heart thumping in my chest. As we start to get closer, you hear the guides making little reassuring noises. So the gorillas know what's coming, know that it's not a threat. I can see the bushes moving just ahead of us. I'm kind of shaking, I'm half with excitement and half with a little bit of trepidation. Dense vegetation provides food and shelter. Even the biggest animals are well hidden in the undergrowth. This is the silverback, the dominant male. And I have to say, there are very few more impressive animals in the whole world. I'm just walking across now. You see that silver saddleback. There he goes. Just the strength to just brush bushes aside. Look at that incredible bulk. They are majestic animals. This is the absolute typical habitat that you would find gorillas in. Very, very thick, very, very dense. They spend a great deal of time feeding on just about everything you can see around us now. 
so they're actually surprisingly difficult to spot, even though they are very large animals. We try and keep a respectful distance so we don't disturb the gorillas as they feed. But suddenly, a cheeky, confident male moves menacingly towards us. See how easily he just pulled that tree down to cover himself. People that actually work with gorillas a lot reckon they're probably ten times stronger than people. They've seen them bend iron bars. He's looking at me at the moment, sussing me out. But the blackback easily has the measure of me. We stand our ground as he struts towards us. And it didn't go a couple of inches to the right. <laughs> so gorillas can be aggressive when defending their families or showing off to a film crew. But like us humans, they also have a soft side and even share some of our worst habits. He just picked a bogey out of his eye and ate it. <laughs> And eating all of those greens gives them appalling table manners. along with thousands of other sublime species of animal, and once they're gone, they will never return. These animals are disappearing because of us, humans, truly the deadliest animal on Earth. But there is hope. Armies of people will risk everything to save these beasts and dedicate their lives to protecting them. Wow. Perhaps one day, you could join them. Come face to face to rare and weird beasties like the Aya. There are so many wild wonders out there, and if you love them as much as I do, it's down to you to protect them. Because whether they're swinging from the trees or munching mini beasts, whether they're cute and cuddly, have boundless bounciness, or are just plain deadly, Wild animals, in all their guises and shapes and sizes, their future is in our hands. We're climbing great buildings here on BBC HD tomorrow night from 6, but back to tonight and more...